It's a smart faucet, so it actually tracks how much water you use. I am a first generation Ukrainian immigrant. I had my engineer uh, mix in Kevlar. It's changed the way I think, it's changed the way that I live. My name is Paul Vobosovic. I'm the founder and CEO of 27 North. This is the Ascender, the all new Ascender 30A. So essentially, we took a military rig and a recreational vehicle and we merged the two together. Welcome inside you guys. So here we're gonna start off with the kitchen or what we call the galley. This is kind of the focal point of the rig for me at least because I'm a big food guy and you know being off the grid for long periods of time you still want to enjoy a nice meal. So I'm gonna start off here on the top. We have walnut door faces. All the walnut throughout the rig is from one walnut tree grown here in Missouri. We use marine grade latches to keep it secure. So on the latches, you see when you press the button, it locks it in place uh, so that nothing falls out. Inside, we have wonderful LED lighting so you can see what's in there. These are ceramic plates and yes, we drive in here with them like this. Inside, similar to like on a gun case, you have that foam velvet like uh, groove. So whenever you put it in, it sits inside the groove and prevents it from damaging when you're traveling. Yet it gives it a nice aesthetically pleasing look. Here we have an aluminum backsplash that mimics what's on the ceiling. It's something you'd find in a nice yacht or a higher end RV unit and it gives it a super cool sleek look. We have outlets here and here, appliances, coffee makers, mixers, etc. You have it all here for you. It's got a nice induction cooktop. It's a high efficiency one, one that's commonly used in van conversions and tiny homes. It doesn't take a lot of power yet outputs a lot of heat. Countertops, my wife's favorite. Uh, quartz. So this is a typical quartz countertop, but what's unique about it, it was custom made for us. So you won't find this anywhere else in the world. These designs here was all picked uh, by our designer and my wife. Uh, same thing here on the drawers. They have this reinforced Euro style uh, drawer slide. It's very sturdy so that when you're traveling off, you know, especially off-roads, you're doing Baja salt flats, you want it to be secure. It's got these really cool latches. You press it and it locks it in place. Next, we have the awesome microwave. It's a microwave, it's a convection microwave, and it's an oven as well. It's an all-in-one and completely electric. You got this nice screen here, gives you all the functions, more functions than I know. I mean, you got everything from bake, uh, roast, speed cook, grill, air fry. I mean, it's all-in-one system. And check this out. So it's a drawer style. So you just open it like this and you can do different settings. So if you're baking a cake or if you're doing, um, you know, grilling uh, wings, you can set up the tray and it'll grill for you as well or air fry. It is a high efficiency microwave. Uh, we have a battery pack that is quadruple what the standard is in the RV industry. So there's more than enough power to use both the microwave and the cooktop. Next, we have uh, the drawers here on the bottom. Same system, you know, you got your European style drawer system. So on the bigger drawers, they are reinforced with a secondary rail, same thing. So, you know, you can almost stand on it. It's very sturdy, very strong. There's no particle board. There's no press boards. We put a lot of thought into it. We understood that this is for us and our other clients, um, a lifetime investment. So all walnut through and through. Walnut's a very, um, I would say premium or exotic wood that is very rugged. It's not as scared of the humidity changes, moisture changes, climate changes. So we want to make sure it lasts for us. So this screen here is a Brunswick screen. It controls everything. It tells you, you know, how much power you got coming in, how much power you got coming out. Uh, you can control your lights, your AC unit, your audio. It's just a central control module. So when we were building this, uh, we travel heavy, meaning we like to take a lot of fresh groceries with us, a lot of frozen meats. We, we're not big on restaurants. We're not big on, you know, food that's not healthy for you. Well, whenever you're going off the grid a month at a time, you know, how do you bring enough food? So we couldn't find a refrigerator that we liked in the recreational vehicle RV industry, even for van conversions, very lacking. So one of my friends said, why don't you look in the yacht industry? And we looked in the yacht industry and we found this awesome refrigerator. So it's two separate units and you could either program them both to be uh, refrigerators or both to be freezers and as you can see in here a lot of space it's stainless steel so it has that really sleek look to it and then the bottom one is a drawer style and same thing here you can have refrigerator freezer refrigerator freezer 
all freezer, our refrigerator, easily a month's worth of food you can pack in this unit. So it's 12 volt. You could run it off of your engine on idle or just a simple uh, car battery, let alone our lithium battery pack that we have. So we had to utilize every square inch. So a lot of people say, oh, you got, you know, you lose a lot of space with the cool shape and design. We actually don't. If you look into our compartments, a lot of storage space. So here we would typically store overflow bed sheets and, uh, you know, comforters, maybe an extra pillow. It's really deep in and then it follows the contour of the ceiling, giving you ample amount of storage space. Another cool feature is, you know, your traveling cleanliness is big, right? You got to be able to vacuum or sweep. Well, we have a really cool system here in the tow kick. It's a built-in vacuum unit. So you could sweep and then you can turn it on and it'll suck it all in. Or we have this really cool thing where you press the button and you extend a hose and the hose will uh, access the entire floor. So you can walk around and sweep up the corners and whatnot. On this side of the kitchen, we have a residential size sink with a residential size faucet. The neat thing about this faucet, it's a smart faucet. So it actually tracks how much water you use. Uh, so if, if you're using too much water, it'll notify you're using too much water. If you're not using enough, you, you know, you can use more. It's got two settings uh, like any other faucet you'd find, you know, shower setting and then just a regular hose setting. Um, it does extend. So if you need to fill, you know, a pot or come over here and you know, fill up a water bottle, you're able to do that. Why we chose the chrome, it's kind of bringing some light. Uh, we noticed black is kind of trending, but it kind of made it feel dark in here. So we went with chrome, it reflects the light and actually brings in some more light. We strategically put the sink on this side of the unit because we have this big window here and you still gives you that feeling like you're at home. So when you're doing your dishes or, you know, washing off your vegetables, you have this nice window here with a beautiful scenery there. Same thing with the countertops. It's a nice custom made quartz countertops just for us. Over here behind me, we have a nice smart TV. Uh, the TV does rotate, so if we're enjoying an evening in the dinette or, you know, you're doing dishes or cooking, you can rotate it and you got YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, it's all there for you. What I really like is uh, the amount of storage you have here. So one of the reasons we made this cabinet higher than uh, this one here, this is actually what we call a half closet. So if you got, you know, a suit that you got to bring with you, the wife wants to bring a couple of dresses, there's a, a rod here that you can hang it here and it doesn't wrinkle it. Also really good for, um, you know, some extra camping gear. If you're traveling with the kids, you know, you have an awesome drawer for the kids. Next, below the sink, there's ample amount of storage. So we maximized it by running the P-trap very narrow. Uh, you know, traditional units, when you open below the sink, it's typically you got plumbing, electrical stuff, a water heater. That is all built into the underbelly. So here you have a huge uh, amount of storage. My favorite part about the kitchen that we have a full kitchen, you know, that's the beauty of a well thought conversion or well thought tiny home is incorporating everything a traditional kitchen will have because we have such a large amount of water and power. You can use this like a regular kitchen and not have to worry about running out of power or worry about running out of water. I am a first generation Ukrainian immigrant here in the United States from a uh, beautiful home country of Ukraine. My family immigrated here in the late 90s to escape religious persecutions. Uh, my great grandfather served in a communist held prison for 16 years of his life. And my parents, when they got this opportunity to come here to the beautiful country of the United States of America, it was really a land of opportunities for me. My, my parents always pushed me, Pablo, you gotta do more, you gotta do something different. And that's what got me thinking, you know, what can I do different that nobody else really does. And so I'm one of the first uh, Ukrainian uh, manufacturers of these, what I call, I call them tiny homes. Some call them RVs, expedition trucks. And so my wife and I, we travel in it full time across the country, promoting our company, promoting people to really come out of their current home and go explore. You know, there's so many beautiful national parks. There's so many awesome people out there that you meet. So uh, whenever my wife and I uh, uh, in 2020 began our travels and our business of van conversions and expedition trucks, um, COVID had just hit, uh, hotels shut down, resorts shut down, and we were big on that. And that really pushed us to think, Surely there's more to traveling than just hotels and resorts. It was definitely a drastic transition from hotels and resorts to, you know, off uh, uh, off the grid kind of camping and, or glamping, you know, 
And so the, the big transition for us from hotels and resorts to off the grid living uh, was the amenities. So in a, in a hotel and resort, you, you don't really have to be mindful about what goes down the drain, what goes down the toilet, you know, how much food to bring. You don't really think about those things. But I, I really like that challenge because it made me mindful. It made me find mindful how much water I use, how much electricity I use, how much food and what food I consume. And whenever I notice those changes, they, they actually have a positive impact on, on society and earth Earth itself and it really makes you more green and more uh, you know more mindful of the people around you back here um, it's a really unique <laughs> confined space but there's so much here so on the top we have a wonderful high efficiency low electric input air conditioning unit this air conditioning unit is dug through the ceiling so you have plenty of air in here and then the air is equally distributed throughout the entire unit next we teamed up with wet sounds who designed us a unique audio system for us so we're one of the few in the world that have this audio system these are 10 inch uh, marine grade speakers each speaker has its individual amp that is located in the underbelly and you can play like calm symphony music or classic rock in the evening and it literally sounds like you're in the concert uh, next we have a really neat led lighting the led lighting it's easy on the eyes and then with the press of a button it can switch to an evening light so right now we have it on daylight because it's day and you know we want it to be bright in the evening it switches to evening lights and it's just a really calm set mood seeing that you know most of the time especially in the winter rainy day is spent back here we had outlets all around that way we can hook up our ipads or camera chargers my wife and i can both be here with our laptops and our ipads and our phones and still have extra outlets the electrical system is located here in the dinette seat we have the lithium batteries there are four of them at 250 amp hours each giving you a lot of amp hours of battery on the inverters we have two 3600 watt inverters so with the unique battery system that navico designed for us we can actually go six days off the grid without using solar or the dc to dc charger from the alternator uh, we've tested it so we had just mixed use typical off-road um, camping so we use a combination of the cooktop the microwave the hot water heater the lights tvs chargers we made it six days we had heat in the evening because it's you know fall right now and uh, ac in the day because it warms up in the sun kind of the the focal point of this dinette is this table so this table was custom made by a Ukrainian refugee from the war front. He designed it from one piece of slab of walnut, the same walnut that we use, use throughout the unit. So we incorporated the epoxy here, and then we use a natural wax, and it just really well blended with the epoxy. There's a latch here, and it slides over, so you have access coming in and out of the dinette, and then when you're wanting to go back in place, it locks into place. Whenever we bring some friends over or, you know, we have our nephews and nieces that sometimes, you know, go on trips with us, you press a button here and the table will lower. And then these cushions behind my back, they fit perfectly in here. And this is a full size bed. Next, I want to tell you a little bit about these awesome cushions. So unlike traditional cushions that are about four inches, we did six inches because we knew that there'd be people sleeping back here. We don't want to bring extra roll out mats to make it feel like you're in a mattress. And then they're wrapped in real leather with a real leather brown uh, trim piece here that just makes it really clean and sleek. As you can see, I'm six foot and I can comfortably sit back here. My wife, she's uh, about five, six, so she can sit comfortably here. Uh, you can fit uh, five people, adults, comfortably back here. To my right here, we have a secondary control screen. So if I'm sitting here, I can track my water usage and levels. I can track my uh, electricity output and input. And then let's say I forgot to turn off the lights in the, in the bed or I wanna turn on the music outside. I press a couple of buttons here and then um, I have access to all of it right here and I don't have to get up or slide the table out to go over there. You know, it's very, very convenient. With the two speakers strategically located like this, this is my go-to place when I'm working. I got an outlet on both sides, giving me that power that I need to charge my gadgets. The speakers on the inside are all connected to the TV here, and then there's another TV in the back. So you can switch between zones. If you want to entertain you know, a whole crowd, you can link the two TVs together with all the speakers. Or if let's say I'm just wanting to watch something or have the video I'm editing or working on up on the screen, I can select this zone and this TV and just uh, play 
exclusively here in the back. Welcome to our bathroom. I'm not claustrophobic, but something about RV bathrooms and you know van conversion bathrooms is just unattractive. You want some space. You want to be able to take a shower with your partner. And so whenever we designed the shower, we designed it for two. So this is an actual residential uh, shower. So you can see here, I'm stretching my hands out both ways. It gives us a little bit over four feet in here. The neat thing here, we have an electronic mirror. So the mirror actually lights up and then there's a built-in screen. So if you want to try out, you know, a new, a new makeup, a new hairstyle, you pull it up on YouTube, it plays on the screen and you can role play and, you know, do your thing. We have a quartz countertop here. Um, it bevels in. So regardless of your level or not, it'll drain. So the faucet actually has walnut all around and then the water comes out to the side. In here, you have a control module. So actually sitting here on the toilet, you can control your fan system in here. You can control your water pump. You control your hot water heater. You can control your lighting. It's got six buttons to six different features in here. The shower pan and the walls, it's an onyx. Traditional onyx is a little bit thicker, but we wanted to keep the weight down. So we had a little bit of a thinner onyx. We have a residential shower, but then we have a high efficiency shower knob. So it uh, doesn't output as much water. That way you can take a longer, steamier shower without worrying about using all your hot water. Water. The hot water system actually goes through the radiator of the truck. So whenever you're traveling or let's say you're camped for a while, you turn on the truck for you know 30 minutes to an hour and it'll heat up your water system and then it'll switch it over to a 12 volt system that will maintain the hot temperature. The toilet, same thing, you know, uh, you're using the toilet, you don't want to feel like you're crammed or uh, you can't, you know, let it flow freely or you're like on a portable toilet. Uh, we incorporated this really awesome, it's got electric and heat and uh, it's, a, it's an actual wet flush toilet. Um, the neat thing about the glass shower door, so it is a tempered glass and it's a high dense glass, meaning you can hit it pretty hard and it won't break. And the way you handle having a shower door and you know going off-roading and doing all these crazy things is our hinges. Our hinges are same thing, a really nice design. So it's got a big rubber piece in there. So even when you're you know going off-roading or um, you know overlanding, uh, the door moves around and has plenty of movement. We gave it two inches so that even on the most extreme extreme rock climb or pivot point, uh, the door has plenty of space to move around without breaking. So the way it locks in is it's got, it's in the hinge too. So I'm gonna close it here in a moment. You'll hear it pop. That's it coming out of place and then locking back into place. And then same thing, whenever you open it, it locks into place so that even if you're driving, let's say you forget to open the door, it'll swing open to the full position and then stays in this open position or in the locked position. We have 150 gallons of fresh water. We have 50 gallons of gray water and then we have uh, 25 gallons of black water. Um, same thing, you know, you're out, you wanna do it. You don't have to worry about, you know, conserving. You can just let it flow here in the front is what I call the bedroom. The bedroom suite is very important for us because you spend a third of your lifetime in you know, the bed sleeping. And so we went with the full residential king size bed on a memory foam mattress. So as you can see here, I'm six foot tall and I'm comfortably sitting on the ledge here. We put on both sides glass. The neat thing about this glass, it's like a limo tinted glass to where you can still see outside on both sides and uh, no one from the outside can see in. Another neat thing that I like about the bedroom area is, you know, in the mornings or in the evenings, you want to be able to do things other than sleep. And that is, you know, you wanna read a book. We have these awesome lights that open up and they can kind of swivel giving you, you know, a nice relaxing evening light like you would see on a nightstand for reading books. Above me, we have LED lighting that goes all the way to the back. We ran outlets on both sides, kind of a his and a her outlet. Then here on the back side uh, is going to be a secondary uh, smart television. What I would have done differently and what we plan to do on our next build is we're going to bring it up eight inches, uh, giving a little bit more clearance, and then we're going to sink the mattress an additional four inches. So you'll have an additional foot up in the front and as well here to give you a little bit more space. We, uh, we got this rig DOT, Department of Transportation certified, and we found out after the fact we could actually go wider. So we're going to go probably an additional four inches on each side wider and do a secondary ledge. That way, if you have your cell phone up here, you can put your coffee mug on the lower side of it.
with the amount of fuel that we have here diesel fuel we can drive like a semi truck you know for a very long time without stopping well whenever you know the wife wants to come rest or use the restroom you know you don't have to pull over we built a really cool pass through here so you can go through the pass through access the facilities access the bed up here if you wanted to take a nap there's a special net that you can buckle yourself into and take a nap up here or if you just want to grab a snack you can climb through grab a snack climb back into the cab So I plan on living tiny, I wanna say forever, if I could live forever. Um, guys, it's such a big paradigm shift in my life. It's changed the way I think, it's changed the way that I live. I don't ever see myself going back to, um, you know, traveling and living the way that I did. Maybe an occasional trip to resort here and there, but for me right now, it's, it's changed my life. So I foresee myself for as many years that I've left on this earth, you'll, you'll find me in one of these or in a van uh, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. You guys thought that the inside was cool and well, now we're outside and wait until you guys see what we got going out here. So let's start off up top. Up top, we got four 12 revs. These are really unique speakers, They're not even on the market right now, guys. They're 12 inches and they uh, amplify sound about 70 feet when it's noisy. Driving on the highway, you know, whenever we do cruises through like Chicago, New York, you go into the city and you blare the music and you see people waving and dancing and taking out their cameras and shooting. I mean, it's just the greatest experience ever. Uh, I'm not famous, but in that moment, I definitely feel famous. Around the speakers, they're mounted to a, um, a steel roof. Our roof goes outside the panel, so it's impossible to leak. And then whenever they go outside, they curve and come down four inches, and then they have a secondary trim molding on top of it. So it's literally impossible to have a leak on the roof. On the sidewalls, we have a Ghost Global Security System, similar to what you would see like on the Tesla, where around the clock uh, videotapes. Um, you can access it from your phone anywhere in the world. Another neat thing out here is our adventure skin. So this gray here, it's not Rhino liner guys, it's not bed liner, I promise you. It is a Porsche gray paint. I had my engineer uh, mix in Kevlar, the Kevlar you'd find in a bulletproof vest. And then we took a couple other ingredients. We made what we call the adventure skin. I couldn't believe it. The first time he gave me a sample, I right away pulled out my pocket knife and I started trying to puncture a hole in it and I couldn't. It's a very resilient. Next here on the rear, we did uh, make our own custom tail lights. These tail lights are as bright as the DOT let us go. Um, and they go from the bottom to the top and it's a ballistic grade glass as well. So whenever it lights up at night, this whole piece just looks like a stoplight. This is 22 ply military grade wheels and tires. There's a built-in winch in here. So in here, there's a button and it comes out and you press it and the, the tire will come down. You unhook it, roll it in. You got a hydraulic semi-truck lift. You lift it up, swap it out. You bring the bad tire back here. You hook it up to this thing. You press a button and just whoop, puts it right in place. And then we have uh, two safety bolts here uh, just in case the winch cable were to snap. It's not gonna fall off on the highway. We have city infill water here. We have your water tank fill here. So if you wanna go off the grid, you'd fill up your water tanks here. If you do visit you know, the in-laws or you go to an RV park, you can hook up a garden hose here and use the pressure from the hose for your fresh water. On the other side here, we have our uh, diesel fuel fill. So the diesel fuel, we have an auxiliary tank that you can fill, and then we have the main tank that you can fill. Together, collectively, you have 150 gallons of diesel. Next up, we have the uh, rigid lights. So these lights are for when you're backing up or uh, the speakers, the way they're set up is to throw a party on the back and on the sides. So we have these really bright rigid lights to where they come down and it's so bright, it actually reflects the light, giving you a really nice lit area. We have three vents on the exterior. We have special filters, so if you were, you know, driving somewhere really sandy or smoky, the ventilation system actually filters the air before it comes in, not allowing dirty oxygen to come in. Another really cool feature back here on the outside is our winch. We had to really try to get this rig stuck and we were able to do that. We found some pebble, uh, a pebble creek where it was almost like quicksand and we kind of jerked it back and forth until it sank. And then we used the winches to pull us out. We have a 20,000 pound winch in the back and a 20,000 winch in the front. Directly below it, we have a 16,000 pound 
hitch so you could tow a trailer with a car another important feature is the awning so we have an electric awning that comes out it comes out about 15 feet and then it's got these awesome brackets where you can lock it into so that you don't have to worry about you know two columns coming down and running into them Another neat thing that we have on this side is storage. You got big storage boxes here and here, here and here. Fender flares were important for me whenever building this rig. There's not really anything out there. So we actually had these custom built rocks can get stuck in these big old tires. So whenever they kick up, this is steel. So they'll just bounce off and you know save you from buying someone a new windshield. On the bottom, it's a really cool suspension. It's something you'd find on an um, industrial vehicle uh, just because not only the amount of weight, but the traveling that we do, uh, we wanted to make sure we have an air suspension, yet you saw the safety of the springs. So this is literally a leaf spring suspension built in with air pillows. The air pillows have mounts built inside. So if you do lose air and it bottoms out, you're not stuck. And then it's got lift. So you got about four inches of lift here. And then by the time you get to the tail end, you got about eight inches of lift up and down. Why that's important is whenever you're not on a level lot, you can uh, use the air suspension to level yourself out. So we use these storage compartments for a lot of our more kind of outdoor stuff. So you got lawn chairs, you got guns, bows, you got, you know, the wife's bicycle. You could fold it up and actually slides nicely in there. Over here, we have something really cool. The main entrance door. It's actually a, a really rugged door. This door can handle uh, just shy of an AK-47. Like there's no pry bar in this door. The hinges used, you typically would see this hinge like on a tornado shelter door or bank vault door. Down here, we have a really cool electric step. So anytime you open the door, uh, the electric steps uh, come out and then when you close the door, they go in. Uh, whenever you turn on the ignition and put the vehicle in drive, it automatically recesses the stairs as well. The neat thing about the door handle here is it's an elect electronic door handle, almost like a smart lock. So while you also have the manual features, it's got an electric feature. So I have a keychain, and whenever I pull the keychain out, I can press a button to lock and unlock it, similar like on a car. We had a hard choice between an electric step that comes out and a fixed step. I knew we we're gonna be off-roading a lot, a lot of snow and ice, and if it builds up, it locks the step. It's better to have a fixed step than no step. On the bottom side, there's a rocker bar. That way, if I do uh, go over too big of a slope, I don't damage my underbelly. It'll actually rock on these rocker uh, bars here underneath it. Similar to the back, we had to get custom fender flares built. These are custom headlights um, that we upgraded. It has really neat LED strip that comes around Around. It's super bright. We had a custom bumper. Um, it's a quarter inch steel. Same thing. Whenever you're going through branches, through brush, we were really worried about the radiator. You know, as cool and solid as this rig looks, if you have an original OEM radiator and a grill and you puncture the radiator, you're pretty much done. Like you're stuck. And so we put this really cool quarter inch steel grill to protect both the radiator and the underbelly of the truck as well. On the front here, as I had mentioned, we have a 25,000 pound Warren uh, winch. We have awesome rigid fog lights. We couldn't find any aftermarket fog lights that are really bright. So we went with rigid pod lights and we put two on each side. And I tell you guys, I mean, it, it just penetrates the fog on a foggy day. Um, up top there, we have a rigid LED bar. I mean, it lights up a football field in front of you as if it's day. Here on the front side of the truck, what we call the cab, um, you know, being OEM, there's not a whole lot we could have done. So we had to get very creative. And we started with the seats. On the seats here, as you can see, we did real leather with suede accents, kind of like you would find in a high-end exotic car. And then on the center council, we really wanted to tie the cab with the back cabin and the living portion. So we replaced the center council with a nice uh, solid uh, walnut council here that kind of ties the two together. And then inside of it, you got storage compartments from the front to the back. And then kind of the highlight feature, uh, electronically speaking, is this iPad. This iPad controls everything here. Lights, awning, HVAC, heating, you got your shower, your water, um, the suspension, everything, the security system, everything's centrally tied to this iPad. So if I'm driving, and I want to play some music outside, I just open my iPad and I can play some music. So all the cameras are not only connected to my phone, my wife's phone, they're also connected to this iPad so you can view the cameras as you're traveling. This thing does about three gallons of diesel per mile. <laughs> totally kidding. Um, we hit about eight miles to the gallon.
the way you can support uh, our company, our mission, our journey is uh, social media, you know, spreading our name, reinforcing our brand. We're not here about the money. Um, what is very important to me and my wife is we grew up uh, in, in very uh, modest backgrounds. And so we're big on helping uh, teenagers, teenagers that are struggling. And then we also support a lot of orphanages in Europe as well as in Africa. And that's where you see a lot of our profits going. So if you can follow us on Instagram, support us on social medias, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. We have a lot of pages, TikTok, where we put content out, like, subscribe, share, repost. It's uh, it's heartfelt, thank you. So our social media handles are uh, the 27 North, pretty much across the board. Or if you go to Instagram, the 27 North, uh, we have a link tree link on our profile that has links to all our social media accounts.